ba? Rinig ba ako? Sana, I'm, thank you for joining. Again, thank you for joining this uh, very first uh, webinar hosted by Piche UAE. And also, I want to thank uh, C Sir Hilbert for being such a proactive president kasi at least kahit yung sa amid sa ating mga ating situation ngayon eh na na come up pa rin siya ng idea para at least maka reach out sa ating organization di ba so magaling talaga si Sir Hilbert for making up this uh this uh meeting so sana makita ko kayo lahat pero Siguro sa signal ko to hindi ko na review lahat pero okay we can use our chat box naman kasi binabasa ko naman siya binabasa ko siya as a prior the sa mga questions niyo later. So again, ano kaya? Ah, uh, so yung questions pala natin guys is right after na sa presentation. So we can put in we can raise our questions sa chat box then I take down note ko na lang for later for later after the presentation of our speaker para hindi siya walang distraction sa mangyayari sa ating uh, presentation. So siguro okay na si sir yung speaker natin. I think settled na din tayo lahat. I hope so kasi sana kasi we want to start na with a uh, we start you want to start with a prayer lead by uh, mom becky uh, naririnig po ba ako ng lahat yes hello yes. yes yeah we can hear you as we are about to start for this webinar let us put ourselves in the holy presence of god heavenly father we praise and we glorify your name on high, Lord God. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given to us. Thank you for the life of everyone, Lord God. Thank you for all the great Despite of this pandemic that we are uh, encountering at this moment, Lord God, we thank you for your blessings and guidance, O oh Lord God. Lord, today... Uh, we're going to hear the first technical webinar for refractory monolithic and uh, custom for Lord God to be presented by Sir Arnel Lord. Lord, bless Sir Arnel's uh, knowledge as he imparts knowledge to us. May we also learn and able to understand the topic, Lord God, that uh, should be in the future that we might be able to use this knowledge, Lord. Lord, as we continue our for today, Lord God, we ask your blessings and guidance, Lord. And this we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Father. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay na. Na-unmute na, sir. So now, may mga mag-join pa ba, sir? Or ito na lahat? Open ba for... Anytime, pwedeng mag-join. Anytime, pwedeng mag-join. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. Let's, yep, we can start so, and sana, uh, they can join anytime naman. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Sana may mga mag-join pa kahit late na, no? Kasi better late than never naman kasi. So, yes. <laughs> okay, so before anything else, I would like to first introduce our speaker for this afternoon. Okay. For this afternoon speaker, ah, May isi-share pa pala ako. Wait mo lang. Ah, okay. Wala lang para at least may, maba may mabasa. Right? Oh, nakikita ba? Okay ba? Okay ba, sir? Nakikita ba yung ano? Okay. For our, for this afternoon speaker, he was born and raised from the city of Tarlac, Philippines. He earned his chemical engineering degree at St. Louis University in Baguio City. He started his career as chief chemist at Northern Consolidated Corporation, which is formerly known as Midland Cement in Tanay Rizal. Stepping up into his career growth, he moved to Assist Co. Energy and Industrial Corporation in Bicutan, Manila as quality control manager, wherein he engaged operations, inspections, of dense and insulation, castables, 
also known as monolithic and was promoted production manager afterwards. A great opportunity has opened his door when he was invited to work in AZL, AZEL, National Rock Wool Insulation Product Factory in Medina, Saudi Arabia in 1998 and work as quality control manager and later promoted as man production manager until he became the factory manager and worked there for almost 14 years. From Saudi Arabia, he was finally he has finally joined his current company, Visovius, a European-based company which is located in Ras Al Khaimah, UAE, starting 2012. Having gained an ample experience in the manufacture of refractory and insulation materials, he accepted the role as technical manager and continuously embrace his challenges and strive for excellence. He is, our speaker is 21 years uh, as OFW chemical engineer, and he is also a father of two and already became widowed for te uh, 10 years. He has also, aside from that, he has also became uh, our kind of diet, uh, dietary uh, uh advice or because you know as we can see mr this person we cannot believe he is this age already i cannot believe also myself that he is already this age so aside from that uh kumbaga he is a small but terrible person so hindi mo talaga siya uh, malalaman na ganun na yung age niya so without further ado let us all welcome our speaker engineer Arnel Estigoy Dayao. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Iris, for the very nice introduction. Akala ko 21 years old eh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, thank you very much uh, again for joining the first webinar uh, that uh, for uh, for this day. Uh, of course, I would like first to uh, welcome uh, and wish you all good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen of Piche UAE, as well as our um, Piche National Board who are uh, who joined us today. Uh, uh today uh, as uh, the first technical webinar i will be giving general information regarding uh, refractory monolithics or castable you know there are many types of refractory materials but i will concentrate uh, my discussion on the products that we are producing here in russell kema but before going into our top topic today i would like to uh, introduce to you my company. So I will share my PowerPoint now. Okay, this will be used, uh, is a global leader in metal flow engineering. It was founded uh, in 1704 uh, uh, for a collection of metal and glass business uh, businesses. And then it diversified into lead manufacturing, and uh, further di diversification, it has bought Poseco, uh, who is an uh, uh, expert in man, uh, supplying for the iron and foundry industry. In 2012, they've changed the name Cookson to Vesuvius uh, to designate its uh, focus in the high technology project and emerging market. Yeah. Sir, uh, uh, sorry uh, to interrupt. Uh, sir, can you share your presentation? Hindi pa siya shared. Hindi, ah, oh wait. Ah. Okay, okay. Okay. Nakashare na siya? Nakashare na share, yeah. And, uh... Okay. Okay. All right. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, let me just continue to introduce my company. Uh, so, um, we have 49 manufacturing sites all over the globe. Uh, we have 10, more than 10,000 uh, uh, employees. Uh, we are present in Europe, in North and South America, in Africa, in and in Middle East. In the Middle East, we have in Egypt and here in Ras al-Khaima. But uh, we are the one uh, here in Ras al-Khaima that is producing the refractory castable. We are, uh, this is our plant in uh, the free zone here in Ras al-Khaima, uh, economic free zone. Uh, Vesuvius is uh, founded, Vesuvius Ras al-Khaima rather, it was founded or uh, established in 2011. And we started our operations in 2012. Um, by uh, in 2015, we were accredited uh, for ISO 9001-2008. Uh, in the same year, we were able we were uh, given the best uh, HSC performance award by the RAC government. And in 2017, we were also given an uh, excellent performance by our Emirates Steel. Uh, which is in Abu Dhabi. I'm sure that uh, um, most of the people in Abu Dhabi knows Emirates Steel. And uh, also in 2017, we were accredited to ISO 9001-2015. Bishubis Rasal Kema is under Advanced Refractories Europe. And we have two production lines. We have the monolithic line and the precast line. Now, mo, uh, now, most of us uh, are not really familiar with uh, refractory materials. Refractory materials are building materials that are uh, designed to resist the composition of heat, pressure, chemical attack, and retain their strength and form, and form at high temperature. They are composed of oxides of silicon, aluminum, magnesium, calcium, Calcium, zirconia, and zirconia. Refractory are found in every industry which heat is generated or used in the manufacturing process, such as furnace, kiln, incinerators, and reactor. Uh, they are also used to make to make cube crucible, quite similar to what the Egyptians used to melt their gold 500 BC ago. So you see, refractory materials have been around for thousands of years. Today, refractory materials are used in iron and steel industry, aluminum, as well as glass, cement, and petrochemical industries. But there are three types of refractory materials. One is dense bricks or blocks. Uh, dense bricks or blocks are manufactured in standard size of bricks or special shape. And they are manufactured in different by different processes: conventional casting, fused casting, and isopress and slip casting. The second type is the insulation materials. Insulation materials are lightweight materials that are basically used as insulation. They are manufactured in form of brick or bulk with a bulk density of 500 to 1,000 kg per cubic meter. And then there are also fibrous, fibrous uh, material which have density 500 to 1,000 kg per cubic meter. Oh, I'm sorry. This is, yeah, this is uh, the density rather is not correct. That is 50 and 150. Oh. Yes, I'm sorry. It is 50 to 150 kg per cubic meter. And the third type is the monolithic refractory materials. And these are monolithic materials are graded materials, dry premix materials. When mixed with water or binder, they form into solid structure after setting. And we have six types of monolithic materials. One is castable, two is gunning mixes, two is mortar, plastic mixes, ramming mixes, and coatings. Castable. 
Castable are graded or granular aggregate or mixtures of aggregates combined with binder or binders. They are produced in dry premix form and supplied in 25, 250, 500, or 1,000 kg bags. They are mixed with water so that they can be poured or casted in place. That is, the, that is where the term castable came from. Uh, or they are put in situ, casted in place, or into molds. They set at ambient temperature and gain their strength after setting. Under, under castables, there are types of uh, four types of castable we have according to their cement content. We have the conventional castable, uh, which has uh, 12 to 12.5 to 30 percent cement, and the second type is low cement castable, uh, which have 5 to 10 percent uh, cement, then ultra low cement, 1 to 2.5 cement, and the cement pre castable. And we have the gunning mixes or the gunning materials. They are generally similar to castables, but modified for installation by the use of gunning equipment or for hot and cold repairs. So this is the gunning equipment. Uh, the water is in uh, the castable. The dry mix is uh, poured here into the hopper. And then the water is introduced uh, near the nozzle so that when the material is gunned into the wall or into the where where or into the place where you want to uh, to use it, uh, it is moist and it sticks to the uh, equipment or the wall. Now, uh, the third type is mortar. Mortars are commonly known, known as bonding mortar. They are fine graded material which have air, hydraulic, or uh, heat setting characteristic. They are used for joining bricks. There are four types of bonding mortars. You have the air setting or potassium silicate uh, uh, binded uh, material. They do not need heat to set. They can be applied. They can be supplied in either wet or dry premix. See, these are the. This is the dry type bonding mortar, and this is the wet type bonding mortar. Then we have chemical setting, which have post, which are post paid base mortar. Uh, there is another type, which is the heat setting. Uh, clay are used to obtain the required plasticity during installation. Oh and they set uh, when they are heated. And the last one is the mortar, uh, which are hydraulic setting. Uh, they, contains, they contain cement, so that uh, the cement set according to the setting time uh, of uh, or the, of uh, cement uh, material. Mm, uh, I hear something. Is there any question or? Okay. Am I going so fast or what, Mister uh, Sir Hilbert? Mm. Yeah, it's fine, uh, Sir Anand. I think it. Uh, oh, okay. It's fine. okay. Okay, so the fourth type of castable is the plastic material. Okay, this type of uh, refractories are moldable. They are moist. Just a second. They are moist uh, premix that have been produced using an extruder. They, they are generally supplied in boxes or in pails. And then we have the ramming mixes. They are uh, they are similar with castable in appearance, but they do not have, but they do not have uh, uh, binding material, but rather they have sintering uh, additive so that it forms a chemical bond when it is heated up at the operating temperature of the lining. And then we have the coating. As the coating suggests, uh, it is uh, they are refractory materials that are in liquid form that they can be sprayed or brushed on to a surface of the major lining materials to protect them uh, from from damage. So these are the six uh, types of monolithic materials. Now see sprayed and coated and brushed on. Okay. Now the raw, we go to raw materials for the uh, refractory materials. 
So understanding the refractory, understanding the refractory raw materials is an essential part of the refractory te technology. Actually, the manufacturing process of uh, uh, castable is not very complicated, but rather uh, the formulation of mm, of the recipe we call it recipe or the formula that is the where the, it is very uh, technical. So understanding of the raw material is an essential part of producing the castable. There are actually six oxides that forms uh, the basic refractory products, and these are alumina, uh, magnesia, and then we have the uh, silica, uh, lime, zirconia, and the chrome oxide, chromic oxide. So as you see, they have very high temperature. That is why they are called refractory materials because these are the main raw materials that is used depending on what type of refractory uh, materials that you are going to produce. You can use magne you can use alumina alone, and you can use alumina and magnesia. You can use uh, alumina and calcia, or a mixture of these materials uh, can be used to produce specific type of castable which you want to produce or refractory materials for us in Russell Kema, we are we are using uh, high alumina high lime silica and uh, with uh, carbon silicon carbide in some of our in most of our products we have this one but some also contains the silicon carbide now there are examples here are some examples of high alumina raw materials we have bauxite, which has 70 to 90 percent uh, alumina. Then we have uh, new light, 40 to 70 percent, and andalusite, fuse cast, uh, fuse alumina. We have the brown fuse and we have the white fuse alumina, and of course tabular alumina, which has uh, 99 plus percent uh, alumino alumina content. Now, this is the manufacturing process. This is our manufacturing process here in Casal Kema. Now we have a batching line, which has nine uh, hoppers, where we put the major raw materials. As you see, they are all in big bag. And then we have, we have nine hoppers, okay. And then we have the uh, MIB section, which has the raw material in bag. And we have also, which are basically uh, the additive, uh, which are basically the uh, binder and the cement. And then we have also the MHS section. Uh, MHS is the micro hand addition section, which uh, where we prepare our uh, additives for the raw material, uh, for the refractory castable. Now this is a close up or just a focus on the MIB section, which uh, uh, as you as you will note, they are all the materials are all in bags. Now, raw materials, uh, raw materials from the batching line, the cement, and other binders, additives. They are added into the mixer, and they are mixed for um, sometimes. And it's not the mixing time is not uh, more than 10, ten minutes. It's actually much less than that. And then uh, after mixing, this go to the bagging machine. So we, we manufacture uh, and produce in 25 kg bag up to 1,000 uh, kg bag. Now, uh, we have here the manufacturing process for the precast. So from the monolithic line, we add the selected uh, castable into the mixer, where we says capacity of 2,000 uh, 400 kgs. We have also a smaller mixer, uh, which has a capacity of 360 kgs. These are the castable is uh, uh, mixed with water in in these uh, mixers, and they are discharged into a moving conveyor, movable conveyor, where it distributes the castable, the wet mix into the mold. Uh, and then the mold, when after filling, when it is fully filled, is vibrated. 
we have a four meters by four meter vibrating table working uh, in a different uh, frequency. So uh, for a different mode and for different uh, uh, type of possible that we use, we have different frequency uh, for uh, manufacturing the precast. There are also small precast items which go to the small uh, precast mix, mixer. And it also the same, the, the, the idea is the same. Uh, the wet mix is uh, distributed into by the moving con this time by conveyor it's not moving conveyor because uh, but rather we have rolling conveyor where the small uh, molds enter into this side uh, uh, and then oops and then it uh, it is loaded or it is loaded with the uh, wet mix castable in this area and there is also vibrating table uh, by the way here the vibrating table is a mag magnetic type whereas in the bigger in the bigger uh, here the vibrate uh, that the mold is clamped onto the table vibrating table so that during vibration uh, the mold will not be moving so after that the wet pieces or the casted pieces are cured for a certain amount of time. And after curing, they are put into the top up hot oven where uh, they are uh, dried. Uh, the, for each uh, product, uh, we have a different drying cycle. So after the drying cycle, then the finished product will will be like this like for example this is an example oh boy this is an example of a delta roof uh, delta roof um, section it is used for electric arc, arc furnace and this one is a sample of this is from a uh, for a uh, steel industry well this one is uh, roof block. Uh, this is for aluminum industry in Oman, uh, where they use it in their uh, melting furnace. These small pieces uh, are burner blocks used for uh, arc ceramic. Uh, they are producing uh, uh, ceramics. Uh, uh, they are producing plate, glasses, and uh, so on. Okay. Um, after the bagging of the monolithic and uh, drying of the precast item, uh, we have QC inspection. Uh, the QC inspection in the laboratory, we have the setting time. Uh, uh, we, we can do the setting time, the ultra, uh, ultra test, ultrasonic testing, the flow analysis, grading analysis, the bulk density, packaging density, cold crushing strength, and permanent linear chains. Uh, these are the control properties where we do not, uh, actually the control properties uh, are the setting time, the flow, the grading, bulk density, and cold crushing strength. If any one of these property did not meet the specification of the material, the product or the goods will not be released for uh, to be delivered for the customer to the customer. So mm, we have a tight uh, quality control procedure and uh, releasing uh, policy that no materials that get out of spec spec specification will be delivered to customer. Okay. So these are some examples of our products which we have delivered to different industries. We have uh, for the cement industries, uh, we have for different sections of the uh, cement processes. Uh, we have in the rotary kiln, we have in the preheat section. And then also, this is also uh, the one for uh, 
reheat industry for steel industry. Uh, all of these materials were manufactured here in Russell Kema. Uh, same. These are for Esdemir in Turkey. And this is a type of uh, material that we produce, spin cast. Uh, it is being compared to the fuse cast uh, material uh, from different supplier. So um, this is uh, my presentation. I hope you have learned something about refractories or of what we or what we produce here in Rasal Kema. So I would like to thank you all for your attention. So I'll give back again to yes to Sir Hilbert the floor. Okay, okay, sir. Siguro ako na siguro yung magsasalita mo okay. na. Thank you, thank you, sir Arnel, for the very short so. Uh, but uh, informative presentation about your company and your products. And I hope yung iba may mga na late siguro. I hope na cope up naman sa presentation. <laughs> si Sir Chris parang na late din. <laughs> Kaka ano lang, lag in lang. Pero, pero may mga question and answers naman tayo, guys. So I hope na. Uh, along the question and answer, ma more ma understand pa natin yung. Uh, presentation yung gusto iparating ni Sir Arnel sa atin kasi parang ano lang parang yung iba hindi si Ma'am Janice ewan ko di ko kasi na video lahat ng ano kaya yung videos kaya ano ma, ano sir sisimulan ba natin through a uh, person uh, ikaw na ba mismo yung mag raise ng question or ako na yung magbabasa Yes, uh, I, uh, I wish my questions sa chat. Uh, I think na note down mo naman. So, pwede nating Apo. raise mo na lang. Isahin natin then later on follow-up questions. Uh, anyone can raise uh, personally. Okay. Uh, first question is from Sir Hilbert. Yung question niya is, uh, among your clients daw po, sir, uh, globally or regional, which industry has the highest consumption po? Uh, actually, right now, ang seventy percent ng aming product they go to Europe, in Turkey, in France. Uh, basically, they are uh, they are in the manufacturing of iron and steel industry. Thirty percent here also is from uh, aluminum and uh, steel industry here. So I would say na ang the 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 major consumption of our products are the steel and uh, iron industry. Okay, okay. My follow up question, sir. Wala, wala na. Okay. Another question is from uh, Sir Enrico. Tanong niya is, yung mga raw materials niyo po ba is imported locally or from other countries po? Ma avail. Most. Yes, most of our products come from uh, China because, um, uh, as we know, uh, magan, uh, ano, uh, malaki ang natural resources ng China, and then uh, we all, there are also materials that come from that come from uh, the U.S. and some raw materials also, especially the additives from Europe. Okay, po. follow up question, sir. No. Wala na po. Okay. So, question again from Sir Hilbert. Uh, which among the properties you usually encounter quality enc encounter quality issues? Yung... Uh, grain size distribution. Kasi uh, grain size distribution because, you know, raw materials, even from the same source, you know, when they are manufactured, when they are, when they are processed, and even our client has uh, our our other suppliers have uh, strict uh, uh, what you call that? strict uh, quality inspection uh, the thing is uh, these are raw materials uh, you, you cannot you cannot have a 100 percent control over the grain size that is why uh, what we do 
uh, one of our policy is we approve we approve the material before they are sent to us. They sent us the grain size analysis, and then if the grain size analysis meet the specification of Vesuvius, then we approve the material for shipment. Okay, po, we understand po. <laughs> Kasi yun okay. naman po dapat yun, yung prior production, dapat may some, sample analysis, gano'n po. Another question okay. is from Sir Hilbert again. Uh, mm -hmm. How are spent refractory materials disposed or recycled or recovered? What disposal yeah, options again? have the list? Ano po daw yung, the, how are spent spend refractory materials disposed or recycled, disposed or recycled or recovered po? Uh, what disposal options have the least environmental impact? Yeah, uh, spent, yeah. Dispose, uh, sorry, uh, spent and uh, sorry, spent refractory materials. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yung <laughs> use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, actually, sa amin dito, we do not have use uh, refractory because we are supplying their materials, but in our client side, uh, you would note that uh, I said in the earlier that refractory materials are considered building materials. So they are uh, they are disposed of um, in accordance to the building materials uh, policy. Okay. One question also from Mr. Sir Michael. Of specs material po, of specs batch, what do you do, sir? Uh, of specs bats, uh, we quarantine them and then we check what uh, is the specification. Uh, since we know what is a specification that is uh, not met, we try to rework them. Or if not, we use them as splashing, as splashing material for our uh, mixer. Okay. Another question. My follow-up question po ba? So, uh, kay Baka, paano po sir, kung may gustong i-follow up, i-raise na, i-unmute na lang sila individually or mamaya na lang yung follow-up question? Yeah, uh, anytime follow guys, yeah, I, I encourage you, anytime pwede kayo mag-unmute, then you can uh, raise a follow-up question or a new question. Uh, feel free, feel free to join the discussion. Okay. Another question also from Sir Enrico. How is this global pandemic has affected your operation? Well, uh, right now, uh, we since uh, some of our suppliers have were affected by the lockdown, like for example, uh, we have a lockdown in France for one of our major supplier. Also, uh, in India, our India actually our India plant and. Uh, Malaysia plants, they are, they are on uh, shutdown because they were affected also by the shutdown of the government. Uh, as here in uh, Russell Kema, we, what the policy of the company here, uh, of our company for Russell Kema is that 40% works uh, from home, 40% work from home. The remaining 60% because uh, uh, Russell came and said 30% maximum for workforce. So the remaining 60% were divided into two shifts. So 30% works during the day and 30% works at night. Um, for the volume of the orders that we that we are producing, uh, luckily we have some backlog of orders. So those are the ones that we are manufacturing now. Uh, we just don't know on the coming months but uh, we still have some orders to produce uh, uh, for at least two or three months. So we hope that when this comes back, uh, we will be, be again be busy with new orders. Okay, I hope everyone, everything will be okay as soon as possible, yes. Nadine, sorry, because you are so affected na not only yes. our economy, mm -hmm. but our finances also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Another mm -hmm. question is from... Sure. Mm. Sir Ben, how do you bind the cast together, sir? Well, that depends on the product because there are products that we can just uh, uh, add water, uh, like cement, like cement conflict, you just add water. And then, of course, there are percentages of uh, 
water addition and from that it will it will it will dry or cure like the concrete there are other materials that we use a special binder like the phosphate bonded material so we add phosphoric acid uh, just a small amount and then uh, uh, basically and then there is another one that is they call best bond so i do not know exactly what is the chemical composition is a trade secret they wouldn't say uh, uh, tell to us but these are basically the binding materials that we add to the refractory casable to to make them in to form them into concrete okay okay now sir boss sir ben of your question has been answered, answered correct. That question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another question. I think this is already answered the uh, of specs product. Uh, what do you do? Do you recycle? May recycling po bang nangyayari sir sa mga of specs? Well, that depends kasi kung minsan uh, let's say for example if the if the of specs cannot be reworked, what we do is uh, we can uh, we can we try to uh, downgrade the product if it can be ground graded, ground graded. Otherwise if it's not it cannot be downgraded then we will uh just uh, as, I, as i said earlier we will use it for flashing our mixer mm, okay another question from marco which industry has the highest or most complicated requirements of refractory precast it's the cement industry uh, not no, sorry it's the iron industry because they have different types of castables that they use in the process different sections different uh, equipment use different types of refractory products so it's the iron industry that is uh, iron foundry and steel industry they're the most complicated uh, users for the refractory materials okay another question from sir florence florencio sir flo one of the materials used is one of the materials used is chromia which contains trivalent chromium is there any chance in the process that hexavalent chromium is produced? No, we, we are actually uh, the the chromium that we uh, we use is in the mineral is a uh, the mineral type uh, chromium. It's not pure chromium, so and we use it in a very very small amount. So uh, I don't think that the trivalent uh, chromium is uh, produced during the process. Okay. One question from Sir Frank. Do you have process for handling customer complaint? Yes, of course we have. We have the CCAR, which is a customer complaint, a customer uh, corrective action request. We have a database of this one. So we have actually a process for uh, uh, dealing with complaint. We have uh, 8D approach for it. So uh, we are not going to 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 stop until we get the root cause of the problem and we implement the corrective action uh, implementing the changes in our control plan in our work instructions and in all the areas that is affect that is affected by the complaint okay another question next question is also again from sir florencio what is the process technology used in vesrac what is the main advantage of this technology well, uh, the I would say the the mixing technology is the one that is uh, uh, we have. Uh, I would say that the batching and the mixing technology are good uh, are the one that we are saying because the batching technology that we have are totally uh, automated. Uh, the scanning, the scanning uh, uh, embedded in the procedure is uh, I would say. Uh, 100% because we are able to trace from the raw material up to the end product which uh, batch we have used for each of the for each um, raw material in the recipe and our mixing system also has a very nice uh, because you know uh, these are minerals these are in powder forms we were able we are able to contain the emission the dust emission into a minimal level in a very minute minimal, minimal level so I said, these are the technologies that I would say that uh, has advantage for the technology that we are using. Okay. 
Next question from Chris Dominic. How do they separate the alumina from the raw materials or ores, for instance, from bauxite? But we are not separating them because we are using the bauxite itself as a raw material. Now, if, well, if you want to get the raw materials, like, let's say, for example, you know, bauxite can be calcined, can be fused, can be sintered uh, to be able to become uh, uh, the pure aluminum oxide. So the process is uh, not in us, but it is you know, for, from our supplier. Like, like, for example, tabular alumina, tab, uh, I'm sorry, like fused alumina, these are, these come from, the, uh, these are, the brown fused alumina comes from the calcination, fusion, and sintering of the, of the bauxite. So the bauxite, the brown fused alumina is an upgraded version of, or pure version of the uh, um, bauxite in, in terms of alumina content. Okay. Question from Sir Benedict. Due to the pandemic, how do you cope up with the China raw material sources? Oh, it was it was disaster at the beginning of the of the pandemic uh, because we have to de we, uh, because the China our China supplier had to stop uh, delivering the materials. But uh, what we did is we asked uh, some of our client to use different materials. We recommended different materials so that we, uh, uh, materials that we have the raw, uh, make, uh, just to make it clear, we re recommended different refractory materials that we have the raw materials uh, to manufacture them. Those that uh, raw, those uh, refractory materials that we cannot produce because we did not receive the raw materials from China, we stop producing them in the meantime and we stop recommending them to our clients. But uh, finally, the supply from China has started coming. So we are back again to the normal and to the uh, normal uh, production that we uh, do for all our refractory products. It's just a matter of substituting. What we did was just a matter of substituting uh, different or recommending different uh, refractory materials to our clients. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, another uh, question from Sir Bing. Uh, did you know about our contractor in Texas bought monolithic refractory uh -huh. delivered here in Rowai? From Sir Bing, sir. Sorry, Sir A Bing. <laughs> Sorry, sir, I don't know. I would have to ask yung sales na min sa ano, uh, who is assigned sa Abu Dhabi. A uh, follow up question is, sir, Bing, just want to know if that refractory material came from your company. Yun, 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 Bing, alam ni, sir, Arnel, mm -hmm. sir. So, <laughs> so, from Warren, uh, what are the common downtimes in your manufacturing operations? Common downtime is uh, what? Uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I, I I'm very pleased with our company because very seldom do we stop because uh, for lack of spare parts. Because uh, uh, in our ISO system, we should always have a, a buffer or a minimum amount of uh, stock uh, spare parts that we have, and uh, we have also good maintaining uh, maintenance uh, who. Uh, do their preventive maintenance, so we do not have much really, uh, what do you call this one? Throw Shutdowns that really affects, down. yeah, yes, uh, that really affects the production. We do have, however, uh, I would say uh, production down, downtime due to what? Change over. What is change over? That means we are changing from one recipe to another. And uh, when we are changing, for example, a white, uh, as changing a black recipe going to a white recipe so we really have to clean the mixer so that it will not be contaminated and that is why we, uh, we have let's say for example those materials that are white in color that, that they have not uh, met some specification so we use them as flashing material so mm, that's it uh, Mar marco yes ma'am becky uh, in connection to the previous question regarding on the downtime, 
Sir Arnel, how long how long are you going to have the downtime? When you, you said you are going to have it when changing one recipe to other. Mm-hmm. How long is the process long time, sir? Ah, uh, that, that depends uh Becky. There are two types of chains over. We have the uh normal chains over which is uh, let's say for example you are, we are producing one type of recipe uh one uh, which is in the same group of uh, recipe so more or less it will have the same uh raw mat- uh, uh, uh major raw material and there's just an additive that is that is different so that takes only about 15 minutes and then the major uh, major change that takes we have to clean we have to clean the mixer we had to make sure that the uh, no contamination is left in the mixer. So that takes a, a little while. Sometimes it takes 45 to 50 minutes. So what we do is, yeah. So what we do to minimize this change over is with uh, the production, um, make a plan. The production planner makes a plan wherein uh, similar recipes will be produced in a day and then uh, so that the downtime will be only during change uh, for another uh, recipe the next day or even after next day or three days if they can do it sometimes they do it for three three days without uh, having a change over time then that's good for the production because uh, normally we are producing 50 tons uh, 50 tons per day uh, per shift so this is this is our KPI. So we norm uh, we, we do not want to be really below this uh, KPI. Thank you, thank you, Mom Beck. Uh, uh, question from Mom. Um, um, pa sige ma'am. sige ma'am. One last question, na lang. Uh, sir, uh, are you still considering to check your online process during uh, change over? Yeah, we have we have actually uh, uh, what do you call this one time study for for all the movements uh, for our, our change over. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mom Bex. Question also from Mom Eileen: Do you also supply refractory materials for incinerators like cremation for NASA, sir? Yes, yes, yes. We actually supply uh, incinerator to uh, Dubai government. Uh, they are taking their uh, refractor materials from us. Okay. From um, Maricris, how much energy are you using in producing a ton of product? I have the value, but I don't have it right now. <laughs> Maybe I can send it to you later. Uh, I, I did not. Uh, I did not anticipate that question, so I did not prepare for the. Galing po yon kay Ma'am Marie-Chris Vines, sir. Oh yeah. So uh, I can send question. to you, Ma'am Marie-Chris. <laughs> yeah, but uh, just uh, just to provide an overview, Sir Arnel, is it uh, an energy-intensive process, or I mean, compared to other processes? No, not really, because actually, as you saw in the manufacturing process, it's just a batch of uh, uh, it is just a batching line and a mixing uh, process. So those are actually the the main uh, materials. Then we add uh, energy, of course, when you're doing a precast, because that is another step uh, from another step from the main uh, process. So that is where we have an energy because we we use um, uh, energy for drying the precast item so that is the main consumption of the precast uh, of the main uh, energy it is in the drying of the precast item but just, uh, to give you an idea our our maximum drying temperature is only up to 550 degrees centigrade okay uh thank you sir uh, just a follow-up question um do you have in your plant or any other plant uh um implementation of energy energy reduction uh, initiatives or like you know uh, uh, yes, no, your uh, carbon yeah, uh, yeah. footprint mm, not necessarily for the carbon footprint foot, uh, footprint but rather uh, uh more on the consumption of energy reduction in the uh, because we did not compute how much uh, carbon we uh, it is being emitted during the during the process of drying but uh, of course, uh, in, as, as, um, 
as other industries, they want to monitor and reduce the consumption of the uh, energy uh, for their process. Uh, that is why we uh, in Visupius we really try, we really try to maximize the the, the capacity of the hot up of the oven before we do uh, before we start a uh, drying cycle. Okay, thank you, Sir Hilbert. Another question again from Sir Florencio. What are the common additives used in refractory production and are additives used mainly for improvement of mechanical properties or for some other reasons? Uh, there are different reasons you, uh, why you add additives. Sometimes you add additives to increase the consistency of the material. Sometimes you add additives to, uh, to uh, lengthen the lengthen or reduce the setting time of the refractory materials. Sometimes you add uh, uh, additive in order to increase the uh, chemical resistance of the refractory materials. Uh, you add also, let's say, for example, for the non-cement castable, where you don't have cement uh, to have a binder. So we use an additive so that uh, during high temperature, uh, there will be a chemical bond there will be a chemical bond uh, to to make the castable uh, stand uh, as a solid form. Uh, what are these uh, additives usually, sir? What common additives are these ones, sir, for his first question? Okay, uh, you, you can have uh, barium sulfate, you can have citric acid, you can have boric acid, you can have uh, there are many, uh, what we call this as branded type of uh, additives, which uh, uh, we really don't know what are the actual uh, specification. Of course, we have the Budit, we have mm, normally the company that are producing this one, they try to hide what are the chemicals that are there so that they cannot be copied or they cannot be uh, pirated. So they give it, they they are they are putting it their branded name. Mm, okay, sir. Another question from Sir Enrico: Is Ras Al Kaima the most strategic place in terms of energy cost, shipment, etc.? Why are not Dubai? Why not Dubai? Why not here in Abu Dhabi? Well, um, first of all, uh, I think uh, that uh, the consideration before was that. Uh, uh, the good uh, facility for a free zone and at that time i think uh, from what i know uh, i think that time the most uh, uh, the comp uh, or the emirates that was uh, offering the best uh, uh, free trade uh, free zone uh, policy was in here in rasal kema so the management decided to uh, do it here in rasal kema Okay, question from Sir Frank. Most of your raw materials are in powder form. In your process, do you have dust waste? How do you contain it yeah. during production? Yeah, that's, a, that's a, what I said earlier. Our, our technology that we use for the mixing is a good one. That, that is why the emission of dust is contained to a very minimal uh, level. Okay, sure. From Sir Rodolfo, how easy is how easy is it to restart from shutdown, sir? Impact in terms of shutdown time of spec materials, volume loses. Is your cycle production driven or sales driven? First question is how is easy is your startup? How easy is it to start from shutdown? Well, uh, actually, since uh, our our. Uh our machines are not really interdependent no? so it is not it's not typical to have a restart up it's just like uh just changing or uh, just like a change over of uh, a recipe or formulation in the production Next follow question. up question yeah yes. is your uh, follow up question. is your cycle production driven production driven or sales driven it is sales driven because uh, actually we are producing uh, according to the requirement of the customer. We are not, since our raw materials are all imported and it takes time to, 
to arrive in the factory. So we are producing according to the demand of the customer. Follow-up question again from Sir Rodolfo. How is the level of automation in your plant? Well, uh, in in the in the batching uh, batching line, it is uh, almost hundred percent automated because when we launch when, when we download when we download the recipe in the system, uh, uh, the only the only manual thing that we do is putting the raw materials uh, into the hopper, and after that, everything is automatic. Okay. From Sir Chris, what are the challenges you have encountered pertaining to the waste generation generated in your manufacturing processes? Well, actually, I, uh, I, we, do, we really do not have a problem or issue with the disposal of our waste material here because we have a contract with the government and they are sending us different bins where we can put different types of raw materials, uh, uh, waste material rather. Mm -hmm. Okay. From Sir Bing. Oh, sir. Irish, can I ask a question regarding that waste? So regarding for the dust accumulation, uh, do you have mm -hmm. specific mission control knowledge? Uh, again, again. What specific pollution control technology po yung that you are using in your process for the dust accumulation? We have a dust uh, collector. Attached to our mixer. Are you are you also testing, sir, for the accumulated dust in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is if uh, if I'm sure that it is 0 0.04 percent of our production. See, <laughs> sir Ben. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Mr. Arnold. Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, meron lang akong tanong. Uh, as you mentioned a while ago, you are using a uh, automix using hopper. So challenges would be maintaining several numbers of formulation. Do you usually keep the minimum uh, combination of formulation or product mix uh, in the market? Dahil every time na magkakaroon kayo ng new customer, they might demand a new formulation. Do you usually recommend the same product all the time to maintain a minimum list of product formulation? Well, actually, yes. Uh, what we do is uh, uh, we, because we have long list of products, actually. And um, but for steel industry, they are focused on few products uh, and other industries. They are focused on few products also. So what we actually do is we do not stock uh, any, wrong, any finished product in the factory. We only produce what is required by the customer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that were the challenges of uh, change over of products because you have to again change the uh, formulation sure. settings of the machine. So this might yes. be uh, some of the uh, challenges that you encounter sometimes. Yeah, that is why the the production planning makes sure make sure that uh, similar recipes are manufactured. Uh, in a row, so that we will be able to minimize the change over. Let's say, for example, when we are producing criterion materials, so all criterion materials, they plan to produce them in a row, maybe one or two days or three days. And then there's, for example, Hydramax, which is a very, which, has, which contains silicon carbide. So that is a black material. So be before mm -hmm. producing that one, all the white materials are, or the light colored materials are produced before this one is produced. And then when we go back again to producing lighter material, then that is the uh, long time, long change over time. That is why uh, change, uh, change over time. So that is why we reuse these uh, flashing materials to make sure that the black color or the silicon carbide or the silica fumes have been removed from the mixer before we add or we make, uh, we, we produce another uh, recipe or another formulation. So Yes, so it means that the uh, planner and sales uh, requirement or forecast is a high demand on uh, on uh, planning your production. Yes, yes, yes. We have actually one week, three weeks, uh, up to uh, eight weeks production in in uh, in the 
planning in the plan. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sir Ben. Uh, one more, uh, two more questions from Sir Bing. Due to the trade secrets of the refractory formulation, even though specs were met, does it affect the refractory performance since the original refractory insulation of the rotary kiln of our incinerators is from Europe? Damage was re rectified, hotspot still observed. Uh, well, first of all, let us see, see what actually is the problem. Is it really the problem of the the raw material of the refractory materials, or is it really an application problem? Because probably the materials that uh, you, you bought maybe they have high uh, temperature, uh, uh, they are resistant to high temperature, but they may not be the appropriate product for the incinerator because there may be some. Um, mechanical or other stresses, chemical stresses that is attacking or that is attacking the refractory materials. That is why the materials that we have used is, uh, is still showing the issue of the hot spot. Yeah, can Thank I follow up? Okay, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to know exactly, because um, we are not in control about the, the project that we have right now because we are still in the um, commissioning process. The only problem is that uh, when they bought in on that, uh, they said it was the specification of the refractories is being met. However, when they um, do the repair one, um, this this one uh, this I do not know because they, they they said they were the experts about this incinerator thing, but. The only problem is that when they started it again and uh, commissioning basis, trying process, whatever is the application, they they done it religiously according to the procedures. The only problem is still hot spots are being observed. And this is not something, as, as my knowledge is concerned about refractories, when we went to uh, in uh, Ligan, let's say, yeah, it's in Ligan, there's a refractory there. Uh, they have some kind of trade secret that they cannot go into the walls or whatever because even though there is a combination of different ones and our our incinerator is only a low temperature thing it's a mid range like between 750 to 1000 degrees uh -huh. so i don't know if it affects really but we still observe the same problem it's not something that i have to to make it the, the resolution for that but it's just out of curiosity that i want to know because uh -huh. Formulation is uh, like a company base, and sometimes they don't just easily get get easily according to specs. That's on my kind of observation. Yeah, actually, just to comment on what you said, exactly. You may have you, you know you have you, you may have the same specification of uh, of refractory finished product, but you may have used probably there are two different raw materials. You can have that. Let's say, for example, you are using one is using bauxite and the other one is using brown fuse alumina. They may use less brown fuse alumina. Still, you will get the same specification. But the other one, they are using bauxite. They use more bauxite. Still, you get the same specification. So, you, 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 you they will have a different effect on the application. Yeah. Sometimes they use uh, they use uh, mulite. The other use andalusite, but they have the yeah. same specification. I mean, yeah, uh, I agree with that. Uh, I don't really go into details when I talk about our uh, contractor, but the only thing I ask them is, is this the kind of same uh, raw materials? They said, oh, it's within specs and we just buy it because they nga alam mo. If you're going to import it from Spain, and that is a huge amount of money, and they're already losing money, they're the contractors, actually. They're not under ah, our okay. So I was just wondering why uh, they resort out into a local one, which I know that because of this uh, design constraint, whatever, and the vendor of that incinerator came in, but they cannot resolve anything. And still, they have a lot. Anyways, this is not only uh, something that uh, I'm trying to have a resolution, but I, I think it's just a general idea if, if it really affects one's uh, 
the formulation is coming from a different company, then you sort out from a different one, and then it will make a big difference about the performance of what. It's just like my kind of idea. Yeah, you know, you know, you know that is why some of our customers, when they uh, when they want to use uh, our material, they will normally say we need a bauxite based material or we need an andalusite based material so that they will know that uh, this recipe or this formulation is, if it's not exactly the same, it's very near to the specification that they require. Yeah, but I know it's not really the exact thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much we're going to tell that this is like same, but knowing that the, the incinerator is coming from Europe, they have a different kind of insulation. Though they said they, they, they get the right formulation. And that's not my problem anyways. I'm just thinking that I may write, I may be wrong, but please, I, I personally speak with the, the, the vendor that our, our uh, like, uh, not, not the vendor, our uh, contractor, now they are getting away. <laughs> I do not know how they get Anyways, thanks for that information. Um, most of your uh, raw materials coming abroad, do you have any locally sourced uh, raw materials here in UAE or in Brazil? Yeah, you know, you, we have a global uh, purchasing system. So we have uh, we have only we are only buying raw materials from our approved suppliers, which mm -hmm. was, which was approved by the global purchasing uh, department. So you will you will see that wherever uh, from wherever plant you buy the same product, you will get the same uh, uh, specification and raw material. Uh, now for local uh, supplied materials. Of course, uh, silica. Why will I, why will we buy silica from, from China or elsewhere? Because we have a lot of silica here. Well, we have we have the local supplier. We have local suppliers that uh, we have them approved for the silica that they can send to us. And uh, once uh, our R and D center in uh, Barbaro in um, uh, the UK. And find that uh, found that the, these materials are according to the specification of the Vesuvius. Then they gave permission or they gave uh, approval that we can buy from this local supplier. Yeah, uh, I'm just asking because I know it will bring down your cost if majority of this <laughs> this sort of material will be uh, coming from here. That's why it's cost effective. Though. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really going into yeah. like yeah. Yeah, cost effectiveness of the process. What's that? Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, thank you also, Sir Bing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sir. Thank you, Sir Bing. One another question from Sir Warren: What is the frequency of replacement of dust filter in your dust collection unit, sir? Uh, actually, uh, what is happening is that, that there is a preventive maintenance schedule for this one. I'm not just quite sure, but uh, basically, uh, I'm sure it is more than. Uh, I'm sure it will be uh, every month because every month we we take the we take the the weight of the dust that is collected, so it is part of the KPI. So we know exactly how much uh, dust is emitted. So on that basis, I would say that uh, it is uh, once a month. Okay. Any more questions, Sir Warren? Walana, siguro hindi nag open mic. As from Sir Frank. Ah, sige, ma'am Beck. Uh, sir, Sir Arnel, uh, the collected accumulated dust, are you still also um, recycling that one or you are disposing it? No, we're disposing it because we have, uh, we, we cannot use the, the materials because this will be uh, combinations of different raw materials. So we have a special bin from the government to dispose this. Uh, not undergo into another process, sir. Again, it will not. It will not undergo into another process. It will directly go to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it will just go directly to the uh, disposed bin. Thank you, sir. Okay, one last question from Sir. Sir Frank. Do you have any byproduct during your manufacturing process? No, we don't have the. Um, we don't have a byproduct. 
So, we, uh, okay. There is no more questions on the screen. So maybe may mga ano pa, pahabol pa, you can type in pa. <laughs> Sige, uh, in the end, yeah, sorry, Irish. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, I think uh, we can end up uh, in the, uh, our forum. Although, uh, maybe let's give a chance to Ronald. Ronald, do you have a question? Nag-raise ka ng hand kanina? Ah, nakami. May question ka ba? Or na-address na? Dut na pindot ka lang kanina. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Tinry nila okay. lang daw kung functioning na. <laughs> Any other question or bearing issues or something? Um, I think wala na Irish. Uh, yes, may tatanong ako, sir. Hmm, ah, ah, Sige, Anna Frank. <laughs> may baka di ba doon kila sa akin <laughs> <laughs> Sige, send mo na lang yung CV mo sa email niya. <laughs> oh, nakit mo naman yung mga wala, sir. Eh. Grabe naman ito. <laughs> okay. Um, I wish before I... Meron ka pa bang sasabihin, Irish? To close out the session? Wala niya, sir. I think... Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. Mga disciplined persons. Yung mga tao, hindi nagoon ng... Mike, kung gano'n, parang kulang, ano, walang interactions masyad, ay walang, ano, parang, ano, parang nag, ang tawag dun, basta yun na yun. <laughs> sige, sige. Thank you guys for yeah. cooperation. Okay, thank you, sir. thank you, yeah, thank you, Sir Arnel, thank you, Irish, uh, for, uh, thank you, thank you also, for the for wonderful joining. presentation. Yeah, uh, thank you, Irish, for moderating, and, uh, Thank you to all for your time, especially sa mga nasa UAE. I know it's a weekend. Uh, thank you for one and a half hours or two hours of your time today. And definitely thank you to our uh, guests from the Philippines, uh, Engineer Shamane, President Chris, and uh, Dr. Albert. So uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us uh, today. And I think uh, maybe I can ask uh, President Chris, if you don't mind, if you can have some few words for us. Uh, unmute ko na lang. Press Chris na naririnig mo ba ako? I think so. Ah, wala yata si Press Chris. Uh, how about uh, engineer, engineer Shamane? Press Chris, are you there? Yes. yes ah, yes. Yeah. Ah. Ay, naka-admit ka na, Chris. Hello? Ah, hello. Yan, okay na. Everyone? So, I hope everyone is doing well. Maka naman, no? Mga healthy pa tayo. Nakikita ko sa video <laughs> natin. So, thank you, UAE, for hosting this ano, free webinar. I think kayo yung first chapter na merong Ganito. Although yung iba mga kumustahan lang, this is uh, a webinar talaga. We are looking forward sa mga webinar na pwede nyo share to our fellow chemicals. They are asking for more webinars. So, nahihirapan na kami mabigay ng e-books. So, hungry yata for learnings ang mga chemical engineers ngayon. Uh, and also... Um, meron kami naayos for the learning and development of chemical engineers dahil nga sa pandemic situation kayo. Sana mo uh, uh, maka-adjust din tayo sa new normal and kayo rin lahat dyan maka-adjust kayo sa new normal. Hindi uh, pa tayo maglulong forward sa physical so, sa uh, last convention na banggit na rin, na banggit ko kay Aldrin na sana maka ako sa October General Assembly nyo pero dito na lang tayo magkikita-kita sa <laughs> sa online the new so, norm ayun, oh, the new norm natin so thank you on behalf of the National Board and please continue what you are doing and support everyone na, na malayo sa pamilya mm. nandito lang kami mm. para sa inyo so the same way na so, supportahan nyo 
ang mga Pilipino. So, yun lang po. Okay, thank you President Luis. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your time uh, sa inyo uh, to join us. And definitely, th thank you really even uh, your members lahat ng BODs and uh, for your time today. So, uh, expect us to schedule more webinars in the next coming weeks. And uh, I definitely some of you are, you know, if you are interested to present a topic uh, of your expertise, just let me know. Or meron kayong ma-endorse, pwede-pwede kayo mag, uh, pwede natin i-set up yung uh, schedule. So just keep posted sa mga future schedule natin. And uh, definitely, we'll have this uh, sustained. And uh, as raised in the group, uh, in the future, uh, we will apply for uh, CPD points. Uh, and hopefully, uh, sa mga siguro in the, the next, the immediate uh Next uh, webinar natin, meron na tayong CPD points, which would be useful for, for most of us. Okay? So, before we officially end our session, I think yung iba nakapag-exit na, mag-picture mo tayo. If you can uh, turn on your video, hindi okay. man, kung nahihiya kayo, okay lang. Your name is uh, in the <laughs> And picture para meron tayong documentation. Okay. Okay, so I'll give you time to... <laughs> yung mga wala pa sa video, baka nagsusuklay pa. Or ano? Okay, yan, dumadami na. Okay. Kung sinong makapag-screenshot din sa computer nila to share. Kasi madaya. Okay, may habol pa po ba? Okay. Say, oops, nakabaliktad si... Alright. Okay, wala na. Okay, say... Oops. Wala, wala. All right. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. One more. <laughs> Hold on. Uh-huh. Okay. Para makita yung iba. Ah, wala na. Okay. Sige. One, one more. One more. Okay. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay, guys. Unlucky. Uh, unmute ko na kayo. <laughs> okay. And kita kits tayo next time. Congrats, congrats everyone. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Sir Arnel. Thank you, Sir Arnel. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay. Oh, yung i-present natin yung company natin, di ba? Para na uh, mm. Kahit pa paano diba? nakakuha tayo ng ano, ng May meeting pa ba? May meeting pa? Hindi, nee, kung gusto nyo yung ano, mag-stay, okay lang. Bagong kapit dyan. Bagong Bagong kapit. Parang wala pa yan kahapon, sir, ah. Sir, ala na. Hello, inayos, inayos lang, inayos lang. Pinagandaan, ah. Na miss mo ba ang labas? So who will be next? Ano si Rico? Who will be next? Ah, tignan natin kung sino ang magiging next. Nag ano pa ako? Kung nag scout pa ako, sino gusto mong mag speaker? Ah, tignan natin. Bakak itap natin uli yung American University of Sharjah. So since it's a good time na work from home or study at home sila, ah, malamis silang time na free time to conduct uh, webinars. So, from a academic perspective naman. So, highly theoretical uh, webinar and I think it's good para ibang ibang learning naman. Hindi, uh, kasi puro tayo practical, di ba? Yung mga ano natin. Although may theory. But let's see, baka may mga novel uh, ideas or novel knowledge uh, sa academic that they can share. Ito yung mga non-technical na muna. Pwede rin yan. Na-raise din yan. Non-technical. Mm -hmm. Kung non-technical, anong topic kaya ang gusto nyo? Um, 
Ano ba? <laughs> ano ba? Ang technical. Ang hirap din kasi pag na technical eh. Ano ko? Mukbang daw muna sir mukbang. Mukbang. Mm, mukbang daw. Ano mo ni siguro? Stand the online. <laughs> how how to do TikTok? <laughs> sample lang tok muna tayo. Wala bang sample? Sample ng TikTok. Oh, okay. Dilit na, dinilit na. Sana deleted na yung account. <laughs> Guys, ano, gusto nyo ba magano? Ituloy natin yung iftar sessions natin, online iftar. <laughs> oh, kasi di ba? Sa schedule natin may iftar tayo dapat si Alusalo. Food competition ba yan? Pwede. <laughs> May kalabang sa award daw sa ano, best plating, best in, ano, best in mukbang, gano'n. Ano, Janice? Ano daw yung mukbang? Ah, sino nagtanong? Yung mahilig magmukbang. <laughs> Para mihan. Oy, tinutur tinutur na tayo ni ano ni Ego sa kanyang bahay. Hindi hindi na natuloy yung trip natin diyan, no? Ako lok po kong injury ko arang tin by Ego dapat ganoon. Hindi na sa seminar. Tama. Kain muna kayo, bye-bye. Kain muna kayo, sige. Bye-bye, Ariana. Bye. 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 Na din na po. <laughs> Sige, bye. Bye, Irish. Oh, thank Congrats you, again, sir. Congrats. Okay, boss. Thank, oh, thank you sa inyo lahat. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank Hello, press. Yes. Okay. Sige, alis na ako. May nagka-cut-cut yung ano eh, yung uh, video ko kaya hindi ko susubay pa yan minsan. Eh. Okay, no problem. Sinave ko naman yung video eh. So, makikita niya. Okay. Ah, sige, okay. sige. Okay, sige. Bye, Becky. Bye, Chris. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. Sharing. Bye, Ira. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Yung saan natin.